creating a site. In this presentation, we will explore the creation of two separate sites and talk about the relationship and options between them. Now let's take a look at our test site. I'll be using my Contoso home site. And to create a new site, we have two choices. We may go on the left hand side to site contents, or we may go to our settings and site contents. Either way is equally fine. Once we're viewing all of the site contents, if we scroll down to the bottom, we should see the subsite area. This will let us see what subsites already exist, also then allowing us to create a new subsite. Now before you begin to create your new subsite, it is very important that you map out your structure. Now it's not a requirement, but I find that it's a good best practice to think about what sites you need and who the audience that you'll be sharing those sites with. This helps you determine to make sure that in a perfect world, we could have a site for every audience type. So for example, our project managers versus our sales department. Now this may not always be true, but do try to think about what groups you'll be sharing with and what are you sharing with that group? For example, is it just a couple of files? If that's the case, we can use a document library. However, if we plan to share calendar events and uh, library items and custom lists and all sorts of other things, we may be best served to create a subsite for that audience. Now, the site that we have active, in my case, my Contoso home site, will be considered the parent site. And you'll see where that um, is important when we take a look at the inheritance of the permissions. Let's go ahead and take a look now. I'll create a new subsite. I must first give my site a title. We'll say marketing, an optional description. And then of course the unique address bar name, the forever address bar name, and this we should typically make a lowercase, no spaces, and try to make it as compact yet reasonable as possible. So I may decide to abbreviate, for example, and then we can take a look at the template selection. What type of template do we wish to use for this specific group? I'd like to use my team site, now you may see more or less or different options when you look at your template selection based on what we have installed and what's been customized by your administrators you will have choices that are available to you. A team site is what I would like. I'll keep scrolling down. Now let's talk a bit about permissions. I said earlier it is important to know who the parent site is, or I should say what the parent site is, because we have a question to answer. Are we going to give the same permissions as the parent, meaning same permissions as the Contoso home site, or will it be a unique set of users? Will I want a different either subset and or possibly more users than we have on the Contoso home site? Now there's no one right or wrong answer and the good news is we can always come back and change our minds later about permissions. Whereas for example the URL name is something we should not go back and change and you may not be able to go back and change it. But things such as the title, the permissions, you know, those we can come back and change our minds about. Template is another thing we cannot change our minds about. Once we establish that template, we can of course customize that template, but we no longer in the future will have the option to go in and quickly swap out the templates. So be mindful of your URL name and your template type. For now, I'm going to keep the permissions same as parent. Navigation, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as default as well display this site on the quick launch of the parent site, I'll say no thank you, but yes, do please show it on the top link. And then as far as the inheritance, shall we use the same top link bar as the parent? Maybe yes, maybe no. 
right? So personal choices there. And you can always go back and change your mind about the navigation and navigation inheritance as well. I'll go ahead and create. It may take a while for your new site to process, but once it is complete, we would then have the opportunity to see the marketing site. Now what we have with the marketing site, I'm going to go over to the site contents and take a look at what was generated by default. By default, we were given a document library, a microfeed list, a site assets, and a site pages. Now if I decided within the marketing site to have a project option, for example, we want to manage a special project that's going on with marketing, and then again, audience-wise, I may want to invite more and or less individuals in who have normal access to my marketing site. So I will go ahead and scroll down and create a new site. Now because my marketing site is active, the marketing site will be considered the parent. I'll go ahead and give this a name. Let's see, Project X. Uh, description is optional. And then, of course, the URL name. Should not have spaces, should typically be all lowercase. And defer to your organization's naming rules, if they exist, as to how you should name all of your new objects that you build. As far as our template selection, we have a project site template, and it's a collaboration site made just for managing projects, letting us know everything to do, the status, the communications, everything in one place uh, pertaining to the project. We'll say same permissions as parents, or maybe just for variety, a use unique permissions. Because so I'd like you to see the choices that we get. We'll defer to all of the navigation options, and I will then choose Create. Again, remember, this may take a while to process, so do please be patient. Due to the fact that I had chosen a unique audience, before my site is fully created, uh, SharePoint does a timeout, so to speak, and prompts us for a bit of information. For example, what should be used as the visitor group? the member group, and then of course the owners group. I can use an existing list or create new groups. I'll go ahead and create new groups because I may want to invite fewer and or more audience participants for this project site. So it'd be nice to have separate groups so I may isolate out who has read, contribute, and then full owner rights of this particular site. And that, of course, may differ from my marketing and my Contoso site. So always nice to use groups. And we will be exploring groups to a greater detail when we do talk about permissions later on. For now, I'll go ahead and just allow my identity to be the options for each as far as the who is involved. And go ahead and click OK. Once your site is established, of course, it looks quite a bit like the other sites. It does, however, have a lovely project summary up above, which will allow us to keep track of the who should be doing what and when should that be occurring. We also have the same documents. We have a news feed. And let's look at the site contents to see what is provided in a project site. In a project site, we have a calendar, a document library, the microfeed, the site assets, and a task list. Now, of course, like all of the other sites we've looked at, we have an opportunity to customize the individual list and libraries by adding columns, by creating views. Uh, we also then have the opportunity to add new apps. So if there's not a location for me to store what I'm needing, I have the options to use the out-of-the-box templates or create a custom list and or library, making sure that we have just the right place for all the bits and pieces. And then ultimately, we can go ahead and navigate back to our parent site. Now our Project X, of course, is our top site. And then, of course, as well, if we had created, for example, a shortcut to our other sites, if we do not see our, our other sites available, on our top bar or on the left hand side. We can always of course use that shortcut. And then of course we're back to the Contoso home site. 
If I look at the site contents of the Contoso home site and scroll down, I should see that I have my marketing site and my subsite A. Of course, I would not see the Project X because remember, Project X site is part of the marketing site. So I would have to go to the marketing site, look at its site contents, and therefore in its subsite directory, that's where I'd find Project X. Up next, Site Navigation.